I need work, work, whatever I want. Okay, let's see how this shit work out from this day forward. Because my thing is this now. Like, if you want some money now, you need to walk, in, go to your school, go in the office, and file for you a student work permit and Uh-oh. get your ass a job at McDonald's, Burger, or whatever. Uh-oh. That's going to be your money. See, because I have to show you now. Because now I, I know this as clear as day now. Mm-hmm. Kids that come from privileges, mm-hmm. dude. They got a different mindset from motherfuckers like me and you, how we grew up with nothing. Well, no, it wasn't up with nothing, nigga. Just pops wasn't kicking in. Daddy just yeah. wasn't kicking no bread. Like, like, what? Get that look. Like, nigga, what? Nigga, get that what look. Hungry? <laughs> nigga, we know what being hungry, man. I don't mean hungry for food, <laughs> nigga. We know what hungry for life is, nigga. Oh, for hell yeah. For life is, nigga. Yeah, exactly. And, nigga, and let me tell you something. When you get hungry for lust for life, Nigga, that brain start kicking in, nigga. You get the that moving. That brain start kicking yes. in. Plants, yes. business plants start kicking in, nigga. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yes. But as long as you come from privilege, oh my God. nigga, you ain't finna do shit. Jay, you just ask and get what you want. Oh, I need this, mom. I need this, mom. Yeah. You get it like pop, nigga, no problem. And quick, Jay. You get it like pop, quick. So they get it like quickly. You're like, oh, shit. I'm, shit, you living better than grown women, dog. It is a blessing. This is a blessing, but she living living better than grown the regular average women ain't living like your daughter. Dude, my damn cousins, my female cousins, uh-huh. is nigga been getting on my ass for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been rolling out the red carpet for Layla, dude. Yeah, they been they been on your ass, Jay, for real, cuz. My ass, dude. <laughs> and Teresa mother been like, dude, dude, like. That girl, she, you're not raising her right. Mm. You're not raising her right, you know? And let me tell you something <clears> about my daughter, dude. She's an alpha female. Uh-huh. Alpha female. Nigga, you should hear the way she bark at her fucking friends, huh? nigga. Huh? Huh? Nigga, the way she bark at him. And see, they all look up to her, nigga, because of the shit she got. Yeah, the financials. Like, she, like she's privileged. She's like, we got this, she got dude. this, and we ain't got dude. nothing. Yes. Yes. Dude, my baby walking around here, nigga, with four chains around her neck, nigga, huh? laying off each other and what? shit. What? This is four dude. chains, goddamn. Boo. See, dude, I was confused with wanting my kids to have what I didn't have, uh-huh. but I didn't understand the moral lessons I learned from not having nothing. Okay, got you. Yeah, I didn't learn that shit. You know, uh, that's what I learned from not having nothing. They not, they missing that. That's why they says a lot of great athletes, their kids don't even come close to their ass. Because their fathers came from nothing. They was hungry. Nigga, they develop a work ethic and a hell of a discipline. Mm-hmm. You know, only 1% of these, uh, really, I can't even say only 1%. None of the kids was ever greater than their father. Yeah. Now, you done had some sons, you know, that their fathers weren't great athletes, but right. they became great athletes. Right, 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 right. You know, like Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Nigga, that and nigga Kobe Bryant dad nowhere near the fame Kobe had. And Clay Thompson. Greatness Kobe had. And Clay Thompson. Even Steph Curry. And Steph Curry. Steph Curry yeah. better than his daddy uh, and Clay Thompson. Them niggas better than yeah. their daddies. I mean, they was, was better than their daddies all because they looked up to their dads. Though. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, see, yeah, it's a different energy. They, they looked up to their dads. They wanted to be their fathers, yeah, you know? Yeah. But these other ones, <laughs> nigga, sh- <laughs> Michael Jordan's son, shit, nigga, they was, man, that nigga trash. Yeah, trash. no problem. Trash. Nigga, now, everybody looking for Jaquil Neal's son to be something, nigga, but his name all of a sudden stopped ringing. No, what happened? He had a little heart, he had a little issue, health issue, Jay, with his heart, dog. Oh, okay. And he had to go to surgery, okay. so you know, a lot of times, you know, it's, it's mental. You know, that's yeah. it, you know, they'll fall off and it just ain't, ain't the same. He keep trying, but it ain't Because everything I learned about my son, homie, everything is based on what the, fuck what the daddy talking about. You only can push the motherfucker so far. If they don't want it, homie, they ain't gonna do it. Dude, I tell, I tell motherfuckers all the time. If you fucking with a motherfucker and you want it better than them, nigga, you paired up with the wrong motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You paired up with the wrong motherfucker, especially your kids. If you want it better than your kids want Man. it, because one thing about kids, nigga, is too many distractions. Yeah. Too many distractions, especially when they start getting hair around their dick. 
Oh my they get, God. Everybody, they what? They what? They what? They start thinking different. <laughs> you fool, cuz. Nigga, shit. Nigga, look how I was all up under my father, nigga. Uh-huh. Until I got some ass. Shit. <laughs> Pop couldn't Pop couldn't make me pick up a bass guitar after that shit. He's like, what's that? I don't want to. I'm not yeah. I'm not interested. I don't feel like it. Nigga, Pop tried to pull that shit, nigga. Every time I wouldn't pick up that bass, nigga, he would try to take the car from me, nigga. Mm-hmm. Shit, nigga. Uh-uh. I'm running around too many gangsters now, nigga. Nigga. My ass done had too many squabbles. I mean too many squabbles now, nigga. <laughs> I done been to too many hoods, nigga. Um, nigga, uh, polishing my skills, how my cousin Kerry used to say. Mm. So, I never forget, nigga. I was going out with this bra, mm-hmm. and Pops came over to the house, mm. and he wanted me to play bass guitar for his group. His group had a gig somewhere, because mm-hmm. you know Pops was in a gospel group. Mm-hmm. So, um, he um, he wanted me to uh, play bass guitar for them. You know, because, dude, they have bass, bass guitar players, dude. But see, Pops played bass, he played lead, he played guitar, he played piano. Now, my father taught me how to play bass, dude. But shit, when I, ever since I was like five years old. Dude. So, boom, I can play bass to anything. I can't read music, but I can, I can, I can you know, all you got to do is give me a fucking beat, nigga, and I fall in line. Mm-hmm, and matter of mm-hmm. fact, Pops used to get on my ass because, nigga, the lead guitar nigga supposed to be the supposed to have the whole supposed to have the son on him. Mm. Shit, nigga, I used to man, my, the bass. I used to outplay the lead guitar with my bass, dude. I used mm. to run strings, nigga, that you supposed to do with a lead, nigga. And I used to have them church people standing up, nigga, uh, give, giving them the holy dose with the way I used to run that mm. bass. So, pops wanted me to um, that's a damn shame, man. Talk, Pop taught nigga how to t- work on cars, paint and shit. Told me how to do the bass guitar. Damn, dude, I learned some shit. Right. Didn't even realize that shit. But uh, Pops came over one day. He said, look. He said, we got this. Uh, we got to go play at this church. So, such. I, I need you to get dressed and come, you know, come with me to go play the bass. I told Pops, you should have told me that, you know, a day or two ago. I said, I got plans. Woo. He said, yeah. Pops said, well, you might have to cancel that. Because like I said, we need you up over here, you know, to go play bass at this, this church. I told Pops, I said, I can't do that. And uh, Pops looked at me. He said, give me them car keys. He said, give me them car keys. Now, understand this, dude. Pops had took my car twice once before. Okay. And the last time he took my car, he took it and gave the keys to Tim and let Tim drive my shit for two weeks. Mm. Nigga. Now... How you think that made a nigga feel, dude? That supposed to be my shit. Uh-oh. But you take my car because you mad at me and give it to that nigga to roll for two weeks. Uh-oh. Dude, I said, I made up my mind right then and there. Once I get these keys back, this nigga gonna have to kill me to get these motherfuckers back. Woo! Nigga, Pops said, give me those keys. Nigga, I put them keys in my pocket. I looked at Pops. Nigga, I took about one, two steps towards him, nigga, look him dead in his eyes. Ooh, I was serious as a motherfucking heart attack, nigga. Mm. I wasn't for sure if I can whip pops, but nigga, I was willing to die trying that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened, cuz? What happened, cuz? I was willing to die trying. I looked at pops dead in his eyes. I said, you told me a day will come that uh, we can go to the alley. I said, today, I want to go to the alley. And Pops looked at me, and Joke heard that shit, and Joke said, and as soon as he come out, I want to go in. And, uh, shit, Pops looked at these two, two, two motherfuckers, two young motherfucking vibrants, and none of these niggas had smiles on their face. <laughs> <laughs> and both these niggas got a cold ass stare right now. <laughs> nigga, Pops just turned around, nigga, got his shit and left. I wonder what he was. I wonder what Uncle Woody was saying to himself, cuz. I wonder what he was saying to himself. <laughs> like, nigga. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something after that shit. Pops knew who we was after that shit because I never forget, dude. This is my first time being introduced to them uh, 111 Broadway niggas. 
Broadway. Yeah, 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 one eleven, one eleven, yeah, one eleven. Yeah, one eleven Broadway. <clears throat> First time I got introduced to the boss. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Pops was fucking with a broad over there, off of hundred and twelfth and Broadway. Mm-hmm. And Pops let this broad, younger broad too, use his car. And the bitch didn't want to get a car back. She got used to driving and didn't want to get a car back. What? And she probably had her young nigga driving it too. Yeah, okay. So Pops came over to the house, told me and Joe he need us to go over there and get his car back. Nigga, me and Joe, by our fucking self, nigga pulled up on Broadway, seen Pops' car sitting in front of a green apartment building, mm-hmm. two story apartment building, mm-hmm. right there on Broadway. Mm-hmm. 111, I think it was between 111 and 112. Right. Pull up, nigga, I told Joe to stand by the car. Nigga, I got the car, knocked on the door. The bitch came to the car. I said, check this out. Give me my f- motherfucking father keys. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. Nigga, she made a mistake, and she had cracked the door. Nigga, I slung that motherfucker open so hard, nigga, bounced off the back wall and shit, nigga, and I grabbed that bitch. And uh, she started screaming, and uh, I guess her brother, somebody came outside, joke rest in the yard. We was making so much noise, nigga. Everybody in that building came out. Neighbors came out. Dude, me and Joke were surrounded. I guess it was about, about 20, 30 motherfuckers, right? Damn. But, boo, this how motherfuckers read us. Nigga, not only I told the motherfuckers, nigga, we ain't leaving without this motherfucking car, that any motherfucker that put his hands on us, nigga, would have to move that motherfucking day, nigga, because the fucking building getting shot up and burnt the fuck down, nigga. I said, any motherfucker. And I said, bitch, get them keys. And I, the whole time I was holding that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they was, she was like, give them the keys, give them the keys. <laughs> bitch gave me the keys. I still wouldn't move. I was holding on to that bitch. Until Joe, when he got the car we was in, and pulled up, nigga. And I walked that bitch to the, to the car. We the car was up, nigga. I held the door, got in that motherfucker. Nigga, all them niggas out there talking shit. Nigga, this is woo-woo, this woo 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 all that old shit. I said, you know what? You stupid motherfuckers want to get involved in this shit. Nigga, something don't concern y'all. That's on y'all. But like I said, nigga, we'll light this motherfucker up. You ain't the only niggas with guns. You ain't the only <laughs> niggas with guns. I say, well, nigga, today I'm going to make you prove that point, motherfucker. <laughs> shit, nigga. Oh, we got that nigga shit back, right? Yeah. That nigga was happy. One of his partners, you know, didn't have no car. Pops had a motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Pop said nigga used the motorcycle. Nigga had the motorcycle for six, seven months. <laughs> Pop said the nigga was dodging him, ducking and dodging him. Every time he went to go get his motorcycle, uh, his wife was saying he wasn't home and this and that shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, Pop said he didn't have extra set of keys to the bike because the bike was always parked in front of the nigga house. But, you know, he didn't have extra set of keys to the bike. He sent me and Joe to Linwood. Damn. And we went over there, dude. It wasn't the same dramatic. But when that nigga uh, friend seen me and Joe there, nigga, that nigga didn't do shit but hand over them keys. Mm. <laughs> so, dude, from when I looked Pops in his eyes to a nigga, I wanted to go to the alley, I knew right then and there that nigga seen a different motherfucker than me. Mm. He seen a different motherfucker than me. He was like, okay, these niggas, I boy ain't no motherfucking joke. So, so here you go, now you got Pops sending me a joke on missions. Ain't that some shit? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, but that was the first time I knew who 11 Deuce Broadway's was, nigga. Mm. That day there. Wow. Yeah. Uh-oh. Tell you something. Me and Joke made an impression on them motherfuckers. Because even when Joke and them got over there on the 110th, nigga, they was acting like Joke and Caleb was their best friend. Wow. I told you, what that nigga named Tweety or something. Yeah, that the little bitty, that little nigga. Yeah, the little Tweety. <laughs> yeah, that nigga was always over there kicking with them niggas, getting high and shit. Uh, that nigga Bam, uh, S back. I was like, man, you know, you got all of these niggas over here kicking it and shit. But uh, uh, and it was crazy because they little homeboys used to always come ask Joe and Kalo for advice, dude. Used to always instead of running to them niggas asking for advice. Wow. But, yeah, dude, like I said, dude, it's crazy. The life I live, dude, 
it, it really takes certain things to happen to trigger my memory on certain shit I did because motherfucker did so much, dude. A whole lot of shit nigga just straight forgot about. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, dude. But you know, at the end of the day, dude, because mm. I, I never could understand why so many respectable niggas had so much respect for me, but when I think about it, I said, man, I done done some shit. That's why. I done done some shit. And niggas say, man, this little yellow motherfucker don't back down from nobody. <laughs> <laughs> This little young motherfucker don't back down from nobody. But Jay, you my nigga for life, but you were not there doing no stupid but see you wasn't out there doing stupid shit to niggas either though. You were not there nah. causing niggas harm and see there's a different type of energy, my nigga. Yeah. You doing that Odell dog goofy shit, fuck around fuck with motherfuckers, that'd have been a different story. Then you would have had a lot of enemies, a lot of niggas not liking a nigga when you out there just fucking with niggas for whatever goofy ass reasons. You know what I mean? It's a it's a different type of energy, but you wasn't that kind of dude. Wasn't that kind of dude, and I was the kind of dude, man, that could that stood up for what was right for a nigga. Right. You know, I stood up for like I wouldn't just be letting you finna just fuck over a nigga for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, nah, nigga, I wouldn't. You wouldn't, and you wouldn't. I wasn't the type of nigga that had other niggas pick my friends for me either. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I wouldn't let niggas pick niggas for me and none of that shit, nigga. Like I said. If I seen a motherfucker was being victimized, being wronged, I stuck up for him. I stuck up for him, dude. Like I said, Big Ed and Black Rob, that wasn't none of my motherfucking business. Mm -hmm. Wasn't none of my business. But, dude, I wasn't finna let that nigga kill Rob. You know, right. I wasn't finna let that nigga do that shit. You know? I just, um, <clears throat> even when I seen what Craig and them niggas was doing with, um, I don't baby mama. I stuck up for that shit, dude. I was like I said, dude, I'm for what's right. But that's why motherfuckers always protected me, dude. Motherfuckers are not. Half the time I was protected, I didn't even know niggas was protected. <laughs> Seriously, dude. And now I understand why Lil Hunch from Great used to always say, man, you the type of nigga that can stick a nigga on kind on. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude, because I, ain't, I don't fuck over nobody. I don't fuck over nobody, none of that shit. You know, and uh, I tell you one nigga that was that was kind of the same way. He was kind of the same way because that nigga was like that with me. Randy McGuire was a protective type of motherfucker nigga if he called you his friend. Mm. He was like that, dude. And Randy McGuire, that nigga was very protective of me. Very protective, you know. That motherfucker, mm -hmm, nigga, I put it to you like this. When I used to go over that nigga house, nigga, shit. What he say goes, and what I say goes. Nigga, <laughs> fuck everybody else. Damn. <laughs> nigga, shit. Dude, he used to be like, hey, babe, crawl over here. Won't you cook us something to eat? I'll be like, nigga, don't hurt no man. You don't make that girl start hating me. <laughs> he said, no, nah, nigga, he might, he might love you. You love Carl, huh, baby? <laughs> what if he was saying no? What if he was saying no? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I used to like, hey, man, no, nigga, she don't need to be cooking every time she see me, nigga. What <laughs> Man. Yeah, dude, but... That nigga was very protective of me. So I seen the similarities me and Randy had, you know. I did, you know. Like, uh, that nigga was so fucking proud of me when I checked his homeboys from 76 East Coast. That nigga, dude, he, he acted like I was his son when that shit happened, mm. you know. <laughs> when uh, the motherfucker talking about, nigga, I heard you wanted to get out on some old shit, mm. nigga. <laughs> I told them niggas, uh, look, nigga, I already know what this shit is about, nigga. And I don't fight behind, I don't fight behind girls, nigga. Uh -oh. I don't fight behind women. There's too many of them out here, nigga. Uh -oh. I said, but I tell you what, I said, nigga, say you don't like my fucking color, my shoestring, nigga. Just say you don't like me, nigga, and we can do whatever the fuck your ass want to do. But what I ain't gonna do, it ain't gonna be behind this bitch. You feel me, dog? Mm. Nigga. And nigga, homeboy say, hey man, hey man, I think she talking about somebody else. I think she talking about somebody else. I said, yeah, nigga, she had to be. And that shit. Wow. That shit got back to Randy McGuire. She, nigga. <laughs> but I tell you what, every time I went on that street after that shit, 76 East Coast niggas, nigga, them niggas knew my name. 
Huh? Hey, what's up, Cole, man? What's up? Hey, dog, we keep an eye on for you, dog. We keep an eye on for you, dog. Who it is? She's been a good girl, Cole. She's been a good girl. I was like, dang, you got these gangsters out here hollering my name and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but motherfuckers just seen, nigga. I wasn't no pushover and I wasn't going to run from nothing, nigga. It's like, like I've been swinging all my motherfucking life. <laughs> so, don't want to no more. I really don't. But, uh, shit. All I want to do is enjoy my smile and my goofiness. That's all I want to do. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Seriously. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, dude. I said, damn. <laughs> Let me go through this bitch coming downstairs. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Got it on, got it on. All right, Jay. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> 